Good morning everyone and welcome back to the two-headed wolf hammer and total war warhammer one as we are doing an empire campaign but first of all let's have a short recap of what we've done last time and what are the plans for the near future in the last episode we took out bretonia to taking over the city of Cologne, which is a welcome addition into our empire especially since they have this unique building the Cologne tournament grounds a very expensive building it is going to cost us 15,000 gold to build it however it's going to get built fairly quickly in six turns and they will start generating a thousand gold of income per turn meaning that in 15 turns is going to pay us off our entire investment which is pretty good We'll also we're going to get plus 10 to public order, stabilizing this region. We will have absolutely no problem keeping it under our control, even with corruption settling in. And finally, and more importantly, we are going to get plus 2 to the veterancy of our cavalry units for all of the characters whenever we are recruiting them. And that's really good because we can recruit them wherever we are into the world and still get plus 2. Combine this with what we're doing in the city of Grunburg and in the Reichland region, meaning that they have pastures and we're gonna throw in the Warhorse Breeder Stables. This is going to offer us another plus three to the veterancy of Pistoliers and Outriders and another plus two to the veterancy of Empire Knights, Knights of the Blazing Sun and Reichsguard unit recruits. Meaning that we are going to be starting with plus four to the veterancy and plus five to the veterancy of pistoliers and outriders making these units really good to begin with and that is an awesome advantage on the other side i mean my main objective when i started the campaign and i wanted to go into these lands was just to take over the Bordelot wineries that was the only objective that i had in mind and We've gotten involved in such a big war with all of the Bretonian factions that I took over this entire area. The entire western area is now ours. And the cool thing about this is that they have all of these ports, right? So we have one in Bordelot, we have another one in Lucilion and Lioness. We have another port in Langui and also one more in Marienburg. We've got all of the western ports. And I was just thinking that I should probably invest some gold on that side and this research in sea charts to get income from ports increased by 10% and we could build a really good economy from this. And I like this region a lot because there are not really threats that will appear in this region. The only one that I can think of right now are the beastmen because they are spawning randomly in different areas and this is one of them and they'll constantly try to come into our territory and attack us and catch us by surprise and things like that so we're gonna throw some defenses in the cities but they will be a really good economic center for us carcassonne does not represent a problem for us Paravon does not represent a problem for us, at least at the moment they both like us and I'm not worried about them. Orcs don't really make it this far into the regions. The Norsk in the north, they might attempt to attack these regions, but mostly their behavior has been attacking the Empire lands over here in Middenheim or these areas in the north. So that is pretty much the plan for the western region, but it is time to start looking towards the east, because while we were caught up in the wars in the west, we've let the faction in the east go wild. So we are now in this big war, as you can see here. We are fighting the Vampire Counts, Ostland, Ostemark, Hochland, and Von Karstein, so all of these re all of these factions are at war with us and they've been running wild and also Weiserland has uh, turned against us they weren't with us from the beginning but there were some diplomatic events that happened and thus they are even angrier at us which is totally okay with me because this is going to give us a really good reason to go to war and take over the city of Nuln and this entire region the city of Nuln has the best i guess you could call it but they can build a unique building which will help us in recruiting or in bringing in artillery 
and everything that we will need as support, especially against the factions in the north, the Chaos Warriors that will appear. We will be able to recruit or higher veterancy cannoneers to take care of them. Okay, that is enough talking for now. Let's take a look at our yes. troops. Our Emperor is resting now in Grunburg after we took it over last time. What orders? We have here our Arch Lector and I want to... Let's see, if I take Troops you out of Koron, how bad is it? Well, it's not that bad. We are losing... Only four per turn in public order and provincial instability is at minus two which will go away in two turns meaning that we will be losing only minus two per turn in the near future well we shall see what we do at the moment i don't have a whole lot of cash that i want to spend let's just go here to marienburg i'll be recruiting new troops in um, for our arch lector here because i want to take it over here to the faction of marienburg and take over the city of gorsel getting this entire region of the wasteland i care more for it because i want to have some vision in this area and see whenever the norska will start appearing or if we have any kind of basement coming in By the volkmar Volkmar, I can start preparing an army for you. I could get some great swords. I could get a whole lot of armies. But I think I'll keep Volkmar stable for Volkmar now. The Grim. Just because I want to build this economy of ports here. Let's see. Is there anything else that I could do during this turn? Can't upgrade the city. You could get extra growth. I could get a bit of extra gold here. And the investment wouldn't be too high. Yeah, I think I've got everything upgraded to whatever I could. Sure. Let's start generating some gold here. Clay pits would be good as well. To replace the clay pits that we have here in the city of Aldorf. Do we have corruption in the area? We do have a 4% corruption that is going down by 0.5 per turn. So that is good. I don't want to throw in any of the Sigmarite Dogma. We are producing 2k per turn in Reichland. So getting some extra income either from trade or from tax rate would be good. Let's see. How much are we making from trade? 2300 is actually more than we are getting from the normal income. So let's be Council of the Burgermeister for the extra growth as well. And that is going to be it. And the turn. I am so itching for a fight here in the East. I've never let things run this wild before in a campaign, but I guess this is the charm of this idea of trying to go. Grave news, my lord. Word is spreading across the... Rising in the northern wastes. The armies of chaos are on the move. They surely plan to invade the world of mortals once again. Prepare your defenses well. For the forces of chaos spare no one in their quest for bloodshed. So we've got ourselves the first chaos armies. Dire tidings from the north. The tendrils of chaos ride and reach out from the accursed waste, tainting the land and sowing the sand. Their corrupt forces wax ever stronger and now their agents are abroad, spreading the foul corruption of their malignant gods. On their heels come bands of marauding warriors led by the most zealous of the Chaos Lords, eager to wreak destruction in the name of the Ruiner's powers. And all the while, ever more warriors flock to some focal points of the Chaos Waste, a nexus of power which transcends their petty rivalries and impels them to join the numberless hordes. Doom approaches and it is only in strength that any hope may be found. These first armies, they are not as strong as some of the later game armies. Well. 
for the forces of chaos yeah. spare no one in their quest this warrior prince became a merchant counselor the burgers control the trade plus 10 percent to the local province income from all buildings so we're getting plus 10 percent income from all buildings in the local region we've also drafted the regulars meaning that we reduce the upkeep for empire infantry units by five percent that is pretty good also got a burger now, the glue that holds urban society together, plus one to public order. What? Well. Then what will I do with you? Is I'll throw you an expansionist for now. Yes, my lord. Bring this hero in Accutane. We are doing pretty good there. Probably upgrading the city of Basilion in order to go to the Imperial port wouldn't be a bad idea. You know what? We are getting 43,000 per turn. Do I want to keep it still in order to bring, build the Koron turning grounds? I think I do want that. So let's be patient for a second. This warrior, I do not want him in the area. I do not want the extra corruption that he's gonna give us. Let's see, where was our witch hunter? Let's set our sights over to this guy right here. We don't have high chances of success because our rank is not that high. And there's not really something that I can throw in here. Is it time? With the Emperor. This region, I do not want it yet. Not as much as I want known. The Border Prince have taken Fildorf. If I attack them, then we will have to be in a war with the Border Princes to the south. They've made progress here. Hmm. Bring me to my men. It's good to have this region as sort of a buffer and to have more vision in the area. Okay, let's take over this this one first. And we'll just occupy. Blessings, yes. We can now recruit the Royal Alder of Grief fights. Majesty and power personified. Their devastating charge exemplify the regal balance. And we've got another warrior bane, another scribe. I am Prince and Emperor. Good. What do I want to do with you? I need four points in the previous group in order to get an Emperor's Journey, which will offer us a lot of extra weapon strength. Get extra leadership and armor for great sword units, that wouldn't be bad. Plus four to Empire Captains and more Captain Hero capacity. Or reduce the upkeep and get plus one to experience at some point for the units. Let's invest in attrition, actually. We are going to be fighting vampires fairly soon. You. What are your chances to assassinate this target? 39%. We managed to do it. It was just a success. It wasn't a critical success, meaning that the hero is going to return, but they will spawn back into their base into the north. So that is a plus for us. Let's speak patrol ambusher. We will be using this captain to cause some damage. Sigma. And at least now we have only a 0 0.1 per turn in chaos corruption. 
I will pick C charts first for the extra income because I want it, but then we're going to pick up Purge the Dark Cults in order to reduce Chaos Corruption. Or should I do it now? Let's actually do it now because it's going to be important for us to keep our region stable. The Holy Order of the Templars of Sigmar or Witch Hunters can be sent under an Arch Lecturer's order to purge vile cults. 10 turns. Yeah, it's a long time investment, so let's let's do it now while uh, things are still quite fresh. Okay, bringing you here. What would I want in this army? Probably another unit of cross, but we are going to spend some of the money to prepare this army. I have enough spears. I would like to cavalry units. And we are going to be able to build some, even though not at high rank. And let's get two units of great sword as well. Because this is going to give us a lot of strength in the ba on the battlefield. If we take a look at trade. We need, really need a lot more trading partners. Who calls? The instrument of Sigmar's will. Okay, well, that's it for now. Let's end the turn. I will hear your Von Karstein wants to give us a lot of money in order to peace out with them. I will hear what you have. These dwarves want a trade agreement. And look at that, it's going to pay us a lot over here. Four hundred and twenty seven. Awesome. Respectful. A healthy respect of the myriad gods is better than none at all. Prey action. Growth is increased by an additional ten. Wherever we are deployed. Over here. Well, on the Mycelian region, we are reducing the vampire corruption by one, but we are starting to get some chaos corruption. So I, I'm really happy that we started researching. And we are going to get two more cavalry. Yeah, this army will be ready to take the city of Gorsal. They will not bother us here for a while. It is time to go and attack Nuln. I see no defenses in Nuln, which is great. Their allies are Karak Norn, with which we just made a treaty. And apparently it got broken. On this occasion, there's not really a point in fighting this battle. We do have a cannon to break their gate, so we're just gonna auto resolve it, take some losses. As you said. Got ourselves a hunter and a monster tracker. Into the dark wall they go. Follow tracks to of fell beasts. Bonus versus large pass five, but on our celestial wizard. Would have wished it to have it on our emperor instead, because I'm not gonna engage our celestial wizard in a battle with some large creature. I am hoping that I'll be able to piece out these dwarves as soon as we are done with. Wisland. Um, yeah. There is a chance that these dwarves will be a bit annoying because they can tunnel and they might appear in this area of Montfort. Where I do have some defenses, but I don't have enough defenses for an entire army. And we will see. You follow this guy. 
yeah, you'll have a chance to assassinate him, so let's bring you up there. The nation calls. Is it time? You? Actually, what I could do... Uh, that's not what I wanted to do. But since I've done it, let's go here to Helmgard. True servant of Sigma. I will deploy this hero, and this is going to be cheaper now. To recruit both the Great Swords and the Emperor Knights, right? I think that's how it goes. I am a rune lord, not some smith. Okay, his armies is not here. Or maybe we have a chance to finish this war and peace out with the dwarves in the mountains. I think that is about it for our units. Let's end the turn. So Osland wants a peace treaty, I won't accept it right now. Oh mighty lord, the fates have surely selected you for greatness. Thanks to my guidance, your tremendous power grows, as if driven by some divine power. Your enemies tremble before you. Under one rule, the time of feuding electors counts and petty squabbles between provinces is over. The encroaching threat from the north cannot be ignored any longer. To face the armies of chaos, the empire must be as one. Only then does mankind stand a chance against the dark powers and their minions. So we've got some money now from finishing that mission. Let's see, what do we have here? Chapter objectives. Maintain 60 units in total. A Grand Master is called for. The full armor might of the Empire should be deployed in all its awesome glory. Such a sight will make Ulrich and Sigmar weep with joy and their enemies quail with fear. This is something that we'll be able to do. We have 42 units out of 60. Definitely something to be done. Institutionalized help. The Empire is an eclectic place full of the many esoteric organizations, religious and otherwise. Such institutions hold a lot of sway, so their blessing is always a boon to any ruling Emperor. Having dominion over their headquarters certainly helps too. So upgrade the outdoor to a city-state. That might be something that we can do as well. Lording it. Reaching rank 20 with one Lord characters. The greater our most loyal servants become, the tighter the Emperor's rule. Elevate the Lord with power, wealth and influence so that Karl Franz's reign can never be gainsaid by enemies within or, or without. Reach rank 20 with one of the heroes, that might be a bit more difficult. The Emperor has many willing servants. If a loyal noble are elevated to greatness, so too should those with skills and influence lie in other disciplines. Make them great and their fate in Karl Franz will be slow, swollen tenfold. And finally, invent and innovate, research 25 technologies. Ugh, I do not know about that. Aldorf, the door. Although the dwarves will falsely claim otherwise, the Empire is the most technically able race in this world. Mankind willing innovates and it is not moribund by traditions or the petty jealousies of the dwarven guilds. We should exploit that. Cool. So that's what we're working towards now. Now we might have a chance to do a lot of assassinations with our Witch Hunter. Speaking of which, let's take out the Chaos Warrior, Chaos Sorcerer first. We managed to do it and we got a new follower, a Rogue. Never do an honest day's work if you can avoid it. Assassination action increased by another 8%. And we were successful. This would break my vows. Beautiful, beautiful. And thus we can increase our chance to assassinate a skilled assassin is a cold-hearted killer and a merciless murderer. How should we proceed? Our witch hunter should so... do work. Our emperor has a new level. I am going to reduce further the attrition reassuring presence the presence of this lord ensures a measure of calm reducing panic and desertion among its followers 
Mostly because we're going to go into Vampire Lands. That's what I'm, why I'm doing this. And let's take a look here. So they do have one army over here. No peace, just war. For some reason, they they are giving us a huge power balance of power. I see that their troops are not necessarily bad. So I would like to fight it. Maybe it's because some of our troops and cavalry have such high veterancy that it is giving us these high chances of winning. But I would still like to fight these bigger battles. Start the deployment and let's see what do we have here. So they start with this, but they'll get plenty more reinforcements. I wonder if I should snipe down the Lord here. So how do I want to do this? I will try to go after his lord here with our emperor and these two Reichsguards. But I'm not sure we'll be able to reach them before his family, his uh, army appears. We'll have you in group 1. We'll have the ranged troops in rank 2 for now. And we'll put the rest of them around here. Ready for war. Swordsman. My Ulrich. Oh, not that. Yep, I actually hit him, but I am going to stop the cannon from firing. He's still fighting. <laughs> ah, so stupid. Okay, so he's bringing his troop. They are fresh. Let's move the Reichsguard around and let's just let the Emperor do his job here, see if we can take this hero out and I'll speed it. I need some items on the Emperor to quickly boost some potions or something that would boost our power. Okay, those mortars aren't really doing a whole lot. Let me throw the Reichsguard into the forest for now. And actually, what I should be doing is actually bring them up on the hill here and we'll be attacking those mortars. Okay, let's, let's run away with the Emperor here. Don't want to take unnecessary damage. And I believe at this point I should be moving forward as well with some of our troops. Oh, 
cannoneers, let's see. Where could I sh shoot at? I probably should attack this arch lector here. He has another hero on that side. Let's spread these units out a bit. Yes, they will have their their own accuracy. Let's attack you. And just like that, we took out his mortar, and that is a great win. This downhill charge should be amazing. Ooh, look at that. That must have hurt. Okay, we've gotten charged over there. I'll attack with you here. We'll take some shots on that side. You take some shots here. Let's bring you around on this side. And we'll have the wizard. Let's do a comet. Where should we do the comet? Let's do the comet. Let's do it here, because it looks really good for me. Archers, let's take some shots on the flagellants. Let's bring our emperor into the fight. And I'll bring him against what? Let's bring him against these units here. Reichsguard, they've taken some damage because they were still. But that is fine, they will recover, it's no problem. Let's see, what are we going to do here? Probably reduce some of the strength of this group. We could also do some chain lightning somewhere around here. attack that good we're going to attack this crossbowman here as well beautiful work at the moment let's make sure everybody's engaged because it seems like some of these warriors are not crossbowman you start firing on the other side Let's see, these gunners, maybe they can take some shots here. Cannoneers, what do I do with you, do? Take some shots of these units in the distance. Don't have enough power for another comet, but I do have another... Actually, let's do something like this, let's keep debuffing these enemies. Okay, I think they're breaking at this point. Only the flagellants will fight till the death. Their hero is down. I am going to hunt down his hero here. As you can see, not a whole lot of armor piercing. Let's bring these ranged troops forward and then I'll get out. Let's get these units out because I'll be using my gunners. You can see the power of armor piercing there, having those guns just mow down a hero.
and there we have it. Let, let's get some replenishments, that sounds great to me. We've got a messenger in our army now. Yeah, this battle does not matter anymore. We'll occupy the region. Faction destroyed. Wiesenberg. Wiesenland. And you can see the dwarves here. They do have some dwarf warriors. They do have some units, but they're not that impressive. I am not in a good mood, manling. I really do not want to be at war with you. I will take out some of your armies, but know that I don't do it in, with a good heart. Let's pick up chain lightning. Lightning arcs across the battlefield, leaping from foe to foe with crackling fury until there are none left within the storm. We'll pick this one up. He became a Taumaturge. He smells a bit sulfurous, but shows an above average aptitude for the magical arts. Skill selection have made this character a highly effective spellcaster. Great. At this point, let's just quickly take a look here. Sturland. Sturland, I could confederate with you. Welcome, my countrymen. You, you would accept confederation, but you would not accept raiding. Very interesting. Greetings on behalf of the Empire. Okay. Dwarves. Ask your favor. You do not want to trade. Let us toast. Well, that is going to have to be it. Apparently there's nothing more that we can do. What orders? In one turn we'll have the army ready to go. Probably refocus on Gorsal here. Aldorf still needs a while until it gets enough growth to throw the city-state in. But I am thinking about removing the pottery from here and adding it into Koron. And because I do that, then the big advantage will be for us that we can throw in the Aldorf magical school. So that is going to have to be it for today. Tomorrow we're going to continue our journeys towards the east. Over here in Nuln, we are going to be preparing for bringing in the war machines. And it should be an interesting journey going forward. With this in mind, I hope you have enjoyed this episode. I thank you very much for watching and for the support. And until next time, I wish you all to have a wonderful day.